What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Jam Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, today we have a special guest, Tracy Spivey4994. How you doing, Tracy? How, how's everything? It's a Sunday night and everybody was chilling. I'm having a good time. <laughs> Brian, how you doing? Good, good. Um, eager to watch Penguin episode two as soon as we're done taping. Brian, the numbers. Tracy, I know you haven't seen it, I know, but I know you've heard. Oh, yeah. Yes. The conversations about this show. Yes. Brian, what do you think? First of all, let's just acknowledge that the Penguin is a hit. His yep. first episode, right, is a hit. Everybody's talking about it. Everybody's seen it more than once, I'm sure. The numbers just came out in terms of the viewership, Brian. Yeah. Uh, what does this all mean with respect to the Batman and <laughs> the future of DC? Well, it's so funny because we had this conversation last week after the premiere lamenting the calendar and kind of saying, if only the Batman part two was coming out this November, immediately following this show. But instead we got to wait till fall of 2026. And then we get the numbers for the premiere. So the premiere 5.3 million us viewers, uh, on, on HBO, basically a little bit behind true detective premiere, but ahead of the premiere of, you know, other prestige shows like succession well ahead of white Lotus, it overall landed the biggest four day audience. Uh, for a new series since The Last of Us, which obviously was a mega hit when it came in the beginning of 2023. Also of note, viewership of The Batman jumped by three and a half X. Wow. Following the premiere. Not percent. Right. So that's a 350%. X. Yeah, right. So anyway, be 450% of what it was is what it did. So wow. people went looking for the linkage. To our point of, yes, this is all probably going to work out, but they are going to lose some momentum and they are going to lose some dollars because they don't have part two of the Batman waiting to go when this show wraps. Ends, yes. And it's a shame. Tracy, you, you haven't seen it, but you've heard the rumblings. Uh, what do you think about Brian's uh, assertion that if they had their stuff going to over there at DC that they would have had a big bundle of money at the end of the rainbow when Penguin finished. Well, Brian's absolutely right. And unlike other people, I rewatched the Batman during the course of a 12 month period, <laughs> knowing that the Penguin would come out. I have rewatched the Batman. I get the connections and maybe I was a little goaded into rewatching the Batman anyway, because I knew the series was coming out. My caveat has always been last year, Hollywood strike, no entertainment this year. And the next three years, we're going to get an overload. This series was greenlit prior to the strike because they saw something in it. I, I don't want to become a fanboy, but they saw something prior to a strike. So everybody putting your thinking caps and acknowledge that there was something, there was something in the mix. Little did they know it would be this much or little did they know they'd have the caveat that we have very limited entertainment and uh, a lot of things strive. A lot of other series like Brian has uh, indicated strive. Then uh, here we are. The numbers are great. Some other series, the numbers are great. But like I said before, Penguin was greenlit prior to a strike. They thought they had something in the in the ingredients. They knew they had something. Yes, I you, you know you guys other podcasts where we talked about Mr. Farrell di didn't like the ten to twenty five hours putting on the makeup. P, you indicated that maybe it's a ploy to maybe negotiations down the line. Brian, on the other hand, said, "Well, not for nothing. You do get a little restless sitting in that chair for like fourteen, fifteen hours." But at the end of the day. The fact that the spike in rewatching the Batman is obvious. They have a hit. People want to reconnect. And of course, to answer finally, yeah, it is kind of bad as far as the studio is concerned, not to have another property out there to extend the success at the moment. So all this is great. Mm -hmm. Does this or has this success, not only with the Penguin, but with the Joker? 
both being Batman villains. Yeah. Now two other names have been thrown in the mix for possibilities. We have Deathstroke and we have Bane. Tracy, do you think the success of the Joker and now the Penguin, which again would have translated into big bucks had they planned this outright, are there it seemingly, and I think Brian and I had a conversation about this, that they're basically, are they doing a Sony where they're taking it upon themselves, you know, to to just do stuff, um, uh, just to get stuff out there and, 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 and I guess take advantage of the success that they had with Joker, now with the Penguin, and they, they now want to continue on with more, uh, with more popular characters like Deathstroke, right? And Bane. These are very interesting characters they're not your c level characters right they're very very popular characters so tracy do you think this is a result of the success of those uh ips joker and penguin i think mr gunn had a plan and maybe you guys will uh agree with it i want to introduce the titans the titans it doesn't work without Deathstroke's introduction. Bane is a Batman villain. Bane will always be there. We've already had several interpretations of Bane. But the fact that a plot, a script, with, of course, the obvious courtesy call to Mr. Snyder, if he wants to use Joe Magnoli once again in that casting, or maybe maybe James has said, you know what? I don't... Yeah, he's going he to cast somebody else. I, I don't want to deal with that DCEU Yeah, stuff. yeah, 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 maybe yeah. Um, I think there'll be somebody in the studio with 50,000 volts of electricity preventing him from doing that. If he tries <laughs> to do that, be like, we don't do that. <laughs> we, yeah. We, yeah. We, we don't, we don't hold over. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which would be a smart move. Um, I think maybe James already had that in mind, obviously with suicide squad, obviously with thunderbolts, obviously there's a thing for villains. Joker two is coming out. Some venom. review and venom and to make money. Yeah. So. And that's that's another thing. Yeah, Venom made money, despite what me or anybody else said. They're really not yeah. interested in Venom without Spider-Man. But do I think it's a Sony move? Not really. I think this was part of the agenda. Deathstroke and Bane are two very popular characters. And if I want to introduce the Titans, I have to introduce Deathstroke. Hopefully yep. Deathstroke won't be turned into Taskmaster and they completely flip the character like they did over in Black Widow. That's right. I said my piece. What a mistake that was. Crazy. Oh, thank you, Tracy. Mm -hmm. that, that's, that's, right. Oh, my God. That's one of my biggest, like, one of the reasons I have Black Widow so low is what they did to that character um, throughout that movie. And sadly, I guess we're going to, Olga Karolinko might be back as that character in, in Thunderbolts in some capacity. So you might have to... <laughs> You might have to more of this. So I did want to, let, let's segue the two things. So one is before we totally leave Penguin, I do want to give, we just, we just gave Warners a, a little bit of crap for how they've organized this, but let's give them one thumbs up. They were right to put this on HBO proper. The audience suggests this, which is a spinoff in all ways. The audience was there for this, yeah. which kind of tells you when we talk about things like lanterns down the road, People will be there for these as prestige shows. And that's a good sign. So that's a thumbs up there. The Bane Destro thing. So I'm kind of lukewarm on it. Like, we'll see what they do with it. However, so the writer is one of the guys who wrote Brave New World. Yes. TBD. We'll see. Yes. But the one thing that was kicking around is the guy that we were talking to to direct the original version of this uh, with Joe Manganiello was Gareth Evans. Mm -hmm. If they get Gareth Evans to do this movie, he of The Raid, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. Let's ride. I'm fine with that. I want to see what that guy can do in this yeah. world. I wanted him for the Blade movie. I will accept him for, for a Deathstroke Bane movie if that's what we can get. Yeah. And Gunn is star... As we said, we think Gunn and Saffron is star-hunting directors. That's what, they're, that's what they seem to be doing. It's the only way to explain Plastic Man... And Sergeant Rock, it's like, it's the guys behind the camera that are bringing them these ideas are name people. So if Gareth Evans is still out there saying, yeah, I will do Deathstroke and Bane for you, then that probably is going to get it done. Yeah. That sounds like Man of Gold with Swamp Thing. That's a whole run. Yeah. If it goes. 
that what is the inspiration though to get all these announcements we even we haven't even gotten superman yet yo and this sounds to me rockish oh uh, we got this plan we got this plan we got this plan we still haven't even got this movie out yet i think it's a rush in part because gun knows the future of the company is uncertain i think there is a little bit of urgency to if i can get a lot of these in motion i can create maybe some value um and maybe some of these may look we saw this with the last regime remember like there was that oh. wave of stuff that started to get announced like right before uh the warner brothers discovery merger happened um some of which never will see the light of day as we know but mm -hmm. i think there's a little bit of that here that they're kind of gunning this universe pun intended to see if mm -hmm. they can you know get stuff up on the board i also think james gunn we've seen this whether it's guardians or suicide squad he is a rogue at heart that's mm -hmm. kind of how he's wired. So I kind of feel like if you get a name director or a name writer who pitches him an anti-hero, he's always going to listen, mm -hmm. much more so than a classic hero. That's just what we've seen in his DNA. And a good director and, and good people that are pitching him this stuff. It's not just, what's that dude, Henry Garcia, what's his name? The, oh, the Rocks. The, the Hiram Rock Garcia, Garcia, The Rocks. Yes. Hiram, the Rocks. Hiram, yeah. <laughs> That's his part. Seven, yeah. Yeah. Seven bucks. Yeah. Seven bucks. Yeah, Red, Red One. The, the Red One had a new trailer the other day. I'm sure you guys were fired up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, you, you know what? The The Rock is a businessman. If you want to get in business with him, you're absolutely right. But James Gunn hiring these directors for these projects, as if we had alluded to it a little earlier, um, The Lanterns. That's a TV series, but he's got basically the entire brain brain pattern and uh of the old hbo the watchman series now once again that comes into whether you you like it or not but it, critically it was acclaimed it's critically acclaimed so now we have deathstroke bane and now that we have finally confirmed uh kyle chandler our, our hal jordan yeah. yes kyle chandler who when i saw the name I had to really take a look and look at, the, put the name to the face. And I said, oh, yes. Yeah. That me too. works. I said, Coach you know what? Taylor. What Coach was Taylor's going to coach Taylor's <laughs> going to coach John, going to coach John Stewart now. And we'll, and we'll get to that. But gentlemen, what do you guys think of that, that, that choice, Tracy? Well, like when you, when you sent me the text, I said, you know what? Cause I, I was picturing him in the last, uh, Godzilla King of the Monsters. <laughs> And I said, <laughs> Millie Bobby Brown, he acted as a father. He also, you know what? To be older cop, Hal Jordan, okay, it works. Obviously, with the caveat, uh, what, nobody wanted this role? Yeah. They were having problems with A-listers wanting the role, or they wanted too much money. But Kyle Chandler, I put the mask on. He's got the hair going. You know what? Okay. He can play That Hal, works. That works. Nobody else wants it. He can yes. play Green Hornet if you really want to get to it. But anyway, <laughs> the original yeah. Green Hornet. I generally, I, I'm generally okay with that. I mean, he's 59, so he's right in the demographic they wanted. He's won yes. an Emmy. He's not necessarily a list of a list all of Hollywood, but he's kind of a list TV. You got an Emmy yeah. on your board as a lead actor. That that yeah. counts. Everyone knows him. I don't know anyone that would be like, oh my god, I hate, Kyle. I can't stand Kyle Taylor. Yeah, he's yeah, always yeah. pretty good, and he's got, he's got a little a hole to him. Like, yeah, he look has that look. That's key to this. Like, you, yes. Hal can't be warm and fuzzy. No. He ain't gonna be warm and fuzzy in this show. So that's why I had some of the problems with like, you know, like you and McGregor's too nice, man. I, I, most no, of the no. like I, I yeah, just no. I don't see it. You know, you need. No. He, yeah, this guy needs to kind of great on John Stewart. Like, I don't know if he needs to go so far as Nick Nolte to Eddie Murphy in Forty Eight Hours. I was just doing my job, keeping you down. He needs to kind of push him a bit yeah. for this show. So now we, we have our Hal Jordan. Who will be our Jon Stewart? The names that, being, that are being thrown out there, uh, Dams, and Idris, Dams and Idris, which I was having a conversation with a friend about that. And I wasn't too keen on him being uh, Jon Stewart. He's just not believable as a, as a sergeant or general. Uh, he was on picture. my list. I'll yeah, he was one of my three. 
I just don't. I just. I. I. I, I don't believe it. Oh, hey, are you judging the body type? Because I, I, yeah. I don't think you can do that with these roles. I like. I think like guy. Because look, we're gonna we can have a discussion about like David Cornswin put on forty pounds. He looks great, though. Man. He but looks I'm saying great. like. But he, yeah, but he, but he, 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 body he, can change. Won't look believable. He's short. That's the one thing against him. He's not yes. tall. That's yes. the, that's the negative. If you he's not imposing. Oh, he doesn't. And Kyle he, Chandler's he, pretty short too. So if you want, I don't know if you want two smallish guys. That's the one thing. But yeah, yeah. He, he just looks too young. He just looks too young for the role. Okay. And so the other two names, Aaron Pierre, and I believe there was another one. I forget the name. Stephen James was another Stephen guy. Yeah. He's on homecoming. That was another guy I thought could work. He's like 32, 33. He, he kind of, he and Aaron Pierre have sort of similar, little, somewhat similar yeah. um, look to them. Um, I had also thought Lionel Boyce from the Bear. Now he would have to trim down a bit for the role, but yeah. uh, I thought acting wise, he could have been an interesting choice. But, but look, it's, I mean, I don't know. It's, it's Aaron Pierre if, if it's, a, a, I mean, yeah. I don't even, you know. Yeah. That would be the <laughs> typical Hollywood mood. He's hot. Selling this to the board, they got to green light it. We got to put the insurance on it. Pitch, yeah. pitch, pitch, sell, sell, sell. Right now is to me, Aaron Pierre. If everybody's Hollywood like they usually and normally are, well, in some ways, I mean, I, you know, I don't think Kyle John Chandler has to be as nasty as Don Johnson was in Rebel Ridge, but some of that dynamic mm -hmm. is kind of what you're looking for. Yeah. That's a little bit of it. There's oh, yeah. Oh, a, there's yeah. a whiff of it in there. And so, yeah. that, you know, I, I think we're, we've already seen the proof of concept. Um, and like I said, Aaron Pierre's 6'3". The physique is there. That's not a problem. Yeah, the athleticism, the athleticism is there. That's not a problem. So the voice. Voice is great. That's the one X factor. His voice is amazing. So. Oh, the, the, it, there it is. Uh, yeah, basically. This, yeah. You know, I know F1 is coming out, and that's going to be popular. And he's going to be in demand. But I think he can play other roles. This one, This one just ain't it. Uh, before we wrap this one up, uh, you you mentioned Cohen Sweat, Brian. Uh, we're getting all these other announcements, and we haven't gotten Superman. Superman is supposed to come out when? Uh, July. 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 A long time from now. We still, Brian. We were hoping for yeah a, a trailer. Do you think we get past October without one? Well, yeah. Now I do because there's nothing for them to attach it to. Yeah. Super Bowl. I, I, but that's to that's, me that's too late. Real, five okay. months before, five months before release, you need to. I mean, they put out a teaser for Man of Steel a year before it came out, and look what that did, man! People got excited mm. when they they hit that. They put out a teaser for Superman Returns a year before. This yeah. idea that like you're going to in a 2025 to Tracy's point, we talked about on our show. There's so many movies coming out. Yeah, you need to get ahead of that. You need yeah, to get yeah, people yeah, yeah. buzzing that this thing looks good and is coming, you know, and, and plant a flag in July. Like in July alone, you've got F1 and Jurassic World. And the and, F1 trailer's already out yeah. and got some buzz. Yeah. yeah. Like. Yeah, you can't. I mean, I understand the Super Bowl. All the eyes are going to be there. You're going to have millions of viewers, but you're also going to perhaps have millions of viewers for the Fantastic Four trailer if they decide to bring that out. Yeah, you, know? you want your own. So I think, it's I think just making a mistake much. here. But look, we just talked about a marketing mistake with Batman too. So yeah, maybe that's a weak link right now. And <laughs> well, they, they got the thanks, they got the Thanksgiving weekend, maybe Christmas weekend, prior well, to we, Super Bowl to get it get a teaser out there yeah. you know a couple a, cu a couple of newspapers a newspapers flying off a newsstand uh, we don't have newsstands anymore but uh i just feel like they're missing out on opportunities to do do you know put something out i mean they could have done something to get the the the, the buzz the, the buzz up when when the document the superman uh yeah. Christmas Reeve documentary came out it was only out for two days you could yeah you could have i mean the only people to uh, a yeah. uh, teaser I mean, the, look, the, the only obvious place remaining is to attach it to Joker, but like that's an odd pairing to me. I mean, character wise, but it's a big release. If you're looking for what is their big fall release, that's it. So, yeah. so I don't know if that counts as October. I mean, it's, I guess it's coming technically right at the beginning of October, but that's it. Like there is no Christmas movie this year. There's no Harry Potter movie or Christmas this year that Warner Brothers is putting out or other yeah. DC movie they're putting out that they can attach this to. So I think 
I think if they just did like an online only release, that's kind of lame. Like, I, I think this thing deserves better. Yeah. Than that. yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So, yeah. But, yeah. so, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think uh, about the death, death stroke and Bane announcement. Uh, is this following a trend? And like Brian says, you know, they're, they're um, putting out what they think will be valuable as what they've done so far, like the Joker and Penguin. Those things are getting buzz and are providing us also some value. So they want to add more to it in case the DCU is not with Warner Brothers anymore. Uh, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of uh, the new Hal Jordan and who you think should be his uh, John Stewart. Let us know in the comment section below. Um, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Report. The show goes on! Yeah!